Well, hello, my sunshiny friends. Welcome back. We're in the kitchen and I was make, I'm attempting to make a recipe that I found on TikTok the other day. However, when I decided to do this, it was because I saw this recipe and I was like, oh, I've got ground chicken in the freezer. It's not my husband's favorite when I do meatballs and meat sauce and things like that. I like it. I put it in soups and, um, one of you had given me a great recipe yesterday for like a zucchini soup and I'm going to use my ground chicken for that for like the fall. Um, and that was on our um, support group that we have on the blue book. So I'll link that down below as well. Um, so like I said, my original reason for doing this was I was like, oh, I have, um, I have ground chicken. So this is a chicken cordon bleu loaf. Um, like I said, I found it on TikTok. It was Sally and Corey. She would post like a bunch of stuff. So I took out my chicken from the freezer this morning, got that like ready to defrost, came over here and started to do my stuff. And first of all, realized number one, I messed up and I didn't check the ingredients ahead of time. When I like am making something for just my husband and I, I usually use like a pound, pound and a half of meat. Um, it was supposed to be two pounds of ground chicken. I only had one. So I just realized that. So I had some chicken breast that I bought yesterday. So I was like, all right, I'll just chop it up really fine, which I did. So I started chopping up some chicken breast and like ground it myself. Well, as I'm doing that, I took out my ground chicken and it smells funny to me. And I, I am... A thousand percent sure it's not bad. It was in the freezer. I freeze like froze it as soon as I got it. But I don't know about you guys. Once I like and I was Googling it and like I know it's okay. Like it was never past the date. It wasn't in the refrigerator for that long. Like maybe for one day before I put it in the freezer. Um, I know it's not bad. I a thousand percent know it's not bad. But that smell, and it wasn't like a bad smell. I was just kind of like and I smelled it too close and now I can't get the smell out of my nose. So, and it's just cause it's raw meat. Like it probably, if I smell this chicken, it doesn't smell great either. Kind of smells the same. But once I've got that in my head, now I can't eat it. So I, I'm throwing it away. It's actually, it's right here. And I know it's fine, but I just, it smells like chicken. But now I know I won't eat it. So, I'm chopping up some chicken. We're grinding up some chicken over here, okay? And we are then going to, so I'm trying to get as close to the two pounds as possible. So I have my scale, which I never use. Um, so I'm trying to get to the two pound mark here. And then once we get there, I will show you what we're gonna do to assemble this like chicken cordon bleu loaf, if you will. Okay, so I've got about just under two pounds here. Um, so this is my ground chicken. I just kind of ground it up myself. I've got some panko. I've got panko seasoned and some um, regular seasoned. I just kind of mix them half and half and I'm gonna put like, I don't know, that much in there with an egg. Okay, and then we're just going to do our regular seasonings. I'm going to do about a teaspoon of Himalayan salt, some pepper, some parsley. Now you can do, um, you know, onion and Italian seasoning, all of those things, but I don't like Italian seasoning. I actually hate it. Um, so I'm going to throw in some Parmesan cheese because... That makes everything better. And um, it's chicken cordon bleu, right? And then hers called for mayonnaise, which I wasn't loving, but I'm assuming it's to kind of help bind it. So I'm just gonna put in like a squirt because I think hers was like a quarter of a cup. And we're gonna mix this up. And then we're gonna start layering this mixture into a buttered loaf pan. And I was originally gonna spray this with like non, you know, cooking spray, but I was kind of thinking the chicken is gonna be so lean that it might burn or stick to the sides. So it'll give it some flavor, maybe some crispness, 
crispness around the edges. So I did use about like less than a teaspoon um, just on a paper towel and just kind of brushed it in there so that we have it. And then I've got hers called for Swiss cheese. I don't like Swiss in my Cordon Bleu. I usually use mozzarella or provolone, so I'm just gonna use some shredded cheese. And then I had some ham cut up in the refrigerator, in the freezer, so I thawed that out and that's what I'm gonna use. So let's mix this, see if I need any more breadcrumbs, see what we got going on here. So I definitely feel like we need more breadcrumbs and you guys know I am not about dieting here. I am about making good food and eating less of it. So this was still a way to, my husband loves meatloaf. He loves chicken cordon bleu. Um, obviously, I, I don't love ground beef, so I'm trying to not eat a heck of a lot of that. Um, I prefer ground chicken. I messed that up. We're not having ground chicken, but we kind of are. Um, and he loves the chicken cordon bleu, like I said, but you know, I fry that, make it, you know, super healthy. So I kind of thought that this was a good compromise. The only downfall is yesterday was shot today, day. today's Monday. Um, so I'm not as hungry. So I'm just hoping that I am able to fully judge this properly. Um, now I think I added too many breadcrumbs, but it's okay. So let me just show you be super this is what we're working with so i'm going to take half of this mixture make sure that it's all incorporated in there and i am going to put half of that into the bottom of my loaf pan i've never made anything like this before so i'm hoping that my husband doesn't hate it We'll see. Sure, that looks like it's about half. So here's what we've got, okay? Now I'm gonna take some of, hold on, I gotta wash okay, it. Now we're gonna start layering our ham and cheese. Um, the recipe originally called for like three slices of like deli ham and three slices of um, Swiss cheese. But my original thought when I saw this recipe was, oh, I have all of those ingredients, um, which I did. I just ended up having to do something different with my chicken, but that was a meat problem. So I don't have as much ham as she used, but that's okay. So what she did in her video was she did the layer of ham, the layer of cheese, and then another layer of ham and another layer of cheese, which I thought was interesting. I feel like I would have rather have had it on top, but then I guess maybe it would overcook that way on the top. So I'm just gonna do it the way that she did it. So I did layer ham, layer of cheese, and now I'm just gonna go in with the rest of that ham. Like I said, I don't have as much, but that's okay because Ham's got a lot of sodium in it. I'm trying to get all of that liquid that was in the bottom because it was frozen, not in there. Um, and then just layering that on here to the best of my ability. And then we'll go in, and eh, we'll just use the rest of the cheese, why not? It's protein, right? So the rest of the ham and the rest of the cheese. Sorry, I don't know if you guys can see that rest of the ham the rest of the cheese and now i'm just going to come in here with the rest of my chicken mixture and it ended up actually good thing i didn't make too much more because it's only going to be my husband and i that will eat this um my son has been trying more and more things lately but um i asked him if he was going to try it and he said no they went out for pizza yesterday and he has leftover pizza so he said he would prefer to just have that now i'm going to press this in here as much as i can because i figure we want it to kind of stick together right when it comes out i don't want it to be 
and I'm having a hard time getting the chicken to stick to the cheese. Maybe once everything kind of cooks down in there and the butter from the sides. But so right now I've got a loaf. Okay, so we have our loaf. I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 for 25 minutes. Then we're gonna take her out. I'm gonna get some more panko mixed with just a little tiny bit of butter. We're gonna mix that together. And after the 25 minute marker, we're gonna put the breadcrumbs on top of it and put her back in the oven for like another 15 minutes. And at that point I will prepare. Um, she did like a, a cheese sauce. I might do like a creamy, I think she did a cream sauce. I'm gonna rewatch the recipe. Um, and I might tweak it a little bit because my husband is a little picky. He like he prefers gravy. So we're gonna see. I'm gonna I'm gonna concoct something that um will make us both equally happy. So let's get her into the oven at 400 and see what she looks like. So I'm gonna do some asparagus with um dinner tonight. So I just cleaned my asparagus, um, clipped all the bottoms, I just rinsed them in my little colander here and I'm just going to dry them off a little tiny bit as much as I can and spread them out on a baking sheet as much as I can get them spread and I am going to just drizzle with a little bit of olive oil and then some salt, pepper, garlic. I realized I knew I was forgetting something before I forgot to put garlic powder in my chicken, so hopefully it doesn't make, um, I try not to put too, too much salt because my husband is a salt guy and he's gonna add salt. He adds salt at dinner no matter what, um, which I have subbed out with like artificial salt, but he still is gonna add it. So I don't wanna add too much salt when I cook. So some garlic um, and some pepper. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of make these like in the same flavor category as my chicken. So I'm gonna do, um, hold on, I think I'll do that first. I don't have any lemon juice, so I'm going to do lime. And I'm just gonna do just like a drizzle just for like some acidity in there. Um, hopefully that doesn't the fact that it didn't have lemon juice doesn't mess things up too much. And then we're just gonna get them all coated with all of the seasonings, all of the things, make them all yummy, get them spread out so that they've got room to bake. So if you guys are still steaming your veggies, tell me why, because I'll tell you. About 14 or 15 years ago, my aunt, my godmother, um, got me a subscription for like parenting magazine or something one Christmas when my youngest was born that year. And um, I found a recipe in there for Brussels sprouts. I don't like Brussels sprouts, I never liked Brussels sprouts. And there was this like roasted Brussels sprout recipe. Um, I would have used like, better cheese, but I didn't actually have any like Parmesan like grated or anything. So I'm just gonna go with what we got and hope for the best. And then I'm gonna throw some panko on here as well. This was just some recipe that I had seen and it looked good and hopefully it will taste good. I'm just gonna kind of put those together a little bit. And then we're gonna bake these at 425 um, just to get them like good and crispy. So normally I would do asparagus um, like sauteed with teriyaki, depending on like what we're eating. And cause I don't like them just like steamed or anything like that. I think they taste disgusting. So um, we're gonna do it this way and I think it will be yummy. But anyway, I made the Brussels sprouts that way. And basically what I did with the Brussels sprouts is I put the oven at 500, I put my baking sheet in the oven, get it super hot, 
I slice my Brussels sprouts in half or in quarters, the smaller the better. And I toss those with some olive oil, lemon juice, um, the smallest sprinkling of pinch of sugar for caramelization, salt, pepper, garlic powder, Parmesan if you want it. And I toss those all together. And then after like 10 minutes when that pan heats up really good, you dump it on there and you hear like that sizzle and you want them all to be as face down as possible. And you roast those bad boys for as long as you like them. I like them burnt, like crispy. Um, I make them almost like potato chippy. They're so good. And I never liked Brussels sprouts. So after that, I started putting other things in the oven. And I was like, why have we been like boiling or steaming our broccoli and our cauliflower and all of these things all of these years? The taste when you roast your vegetables is so much better and it gives it like this real depth. Um, and even in the air fryer, I've been doing the same. So I'm gonna throw my asparagus in the oven and we're gonna go make a sauce. Okay. I'm just gonna make like a quick, I don't even know, just some type of a cream sauce but then I realized I actually didn't have any milk. So this is like, I don't know, a teaspoon or so of butter and like a teaspoon of flour. And I'm just gonna put that together a little tiny bit. I don't need like a big sauce. I don't love gravy. I prefer like sauces, like cheese sauce. Um, my husband loves gravy. And since we are doing mashed potatoes tonight with this whole situation, I'm going to give him, it's my birthday week, and yet I'm like making him stuff that he really likes. So I didn't have any milk. We're not big milk drinkers, um, and I didn't actually have any milk. So then I was just gonna do like a package thing, and then I realized I keep evaporated milk on hand, cause I'm smart like that. So I can still do some type of Gravy, cream sauce, I don't know. We'll see what kind of happens here. One thing that's good about gravy is you can kind of switch it up. So I got my roux going with some butter and some flour. And then I just put some milk in there. And then we're just gonna season that. Gotta have pepper. I'm not gonna use any salt right now because I'm probably gonna use chicken stock or bouillon or something. Um, so I just got a little bit of garlic and a little bit of pepper and we're going to cook that down a little tiny bit and I think I'm going to throw in some bouillon and then I do have some chicken broth here if I need it. So we'll just kind of see what happens. I don't know. We're going to check it out. Stay okay, so I'm going to throw some bouillon in here. Not too much, just a little bit. Um, maybe like a teaspoon or so, just for some chickeny flavor. And that's also gonna give us the salt situation. I'm gonna throw some Parmesan cheese in here cause do you guys see a theme we're going with here? Um, but again, my husband doesn't love, love, love cheese sauce. Well, he doesn't like cheese sauce at all. So I will go back in with my milk. And we'll just taste that, get that all steered up, get that ready to go. And this is gonna be our cream saucy gravy situation. You guys can make regular gravy, you can make cream sauce, you can follow her video. This is just what we're doing. Okay, full disclaimer, I threw in some more bouillon, a little bit of salt, some pepper, and I added some cheese. Shh, Rob doesn't like cheese. But that's okay, it's better now. So you guys know how I feel about seasoning. Season your stuff, taste your stuff, because the first go around, it wasn't good. It definitely needed more. So you just have to figure it out. Gravy's like an easy thing. Sauces are like simple, because you can kind of add to things and figure it out as you go. Um, that's why I cook, I don't bake. But this is, our sauce is ready. Our asparagus is gonna come out. I'm gonna get my loaf to put in. This is after 25 minutes. Now we're going to add our breadcrumbs. Here's our finished product. Let's let it cool a bit and we'll cut it up. Okay, here she is all finished and pretty. Now let's see what she tastes like.
Yes, no, maybe. It's good. Does it taste like chicken cordon bleu? Mm -hmm. How's it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was our chicken cordon bleu. I hope you um, enjoyed a little different take on something. Trying to just mix it up, find some good, healthy options. This is definitely healthier than a traditional chicken cordon bleu. Getting that protein in there. Um, so yeah, if you try it or if you come up with something um, you know, of your own, drop it down below in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you real soon. Bye.